Hello there, welcome to TCM. I'm Alicia Malone and tonight's programming is dedicated to a new TCM book called But Have You Read the Book? 52 Literary Gems That Inspired Our Favourite Films. And I'm so excited to have joining me now the author, Kristen Lopez. Hi, Kristen. Hi, I am absolutely honoured to be here. We're thrilled to have you. You've always been such a great supporter of this channel and now it's exciting that you have your own book. And this is a perfect book for people like me who identifies as being both a film nerd and a book nerd. And I love the title, but have you read the book? Can you tell us what inspired the book itself and also that title? Because I feel like I've said that to my friends. Yeah, I love to know ahead of time what happens in a movie that's going to be based on a book. I can't wait the year or two that it takes to make a movie. And the title was something that I say a lot to my friends as well. Most people will watch a two hour movie, two and a half hours, and go about their day. If you try to tell them, but have you read the book? There's so many additional themes and characters. Maybe people die that didn't die in the movie. You should read it. They'll be like, no, nah, not really, because it takes a more active audience to read a book that maybe is five, six, seven hundred pages. It's really frustrating to me because so much of a great movie that has been adapted is because of the source material. And to read some great works of literature that have inspired some of our favorite films is just an added way of getting into the movies that you already love. I agree. And it's also really fun to imagine, you know, who might play the characters as you're reading a book. If if you can, you can try to cast what your fantasy film version might look like. Is this something you do? It is. Most of the time I'll read a book that maybe has one or two people cast so that I can go in and know that, oh, maybe I wouldn't have cast that particular actor or that actress is going to do really well with the source material. So I definitely fan cast all the time. And speaking of a great cast of characters, our first film adaptation we're watching is from 1939. It's Wuthering Heights. It's an adaptation, of course, of the classic novel written by Emily Bronte. So there was a lot of conjecture about who was right for the characters of Heathcliff and Cathy. Here we have Laurence Olivier as Heathcliff, Mel Oberon as Cathy. What do you think about their casting? I think the casting is just fantastic. I know that Laurence Olivier was not too happy with the casting. He really wanted Vivian Lee to play Kathy, and the fact that she didn't supposedly colored how he went into this movie and his performance. But honestly, I think Merle Oberon has that great blend of entitled princess that you see a little bit in this movie with the more wild, free-spiritedness that you see in the early parts of the film. And Laurence Olivier played some of the great anti-heroes of classic literature. His Heathcliff is just perfect and there's no one like him. So I think the casting here is just amazing. Yeah, we see in his Shakespearean roles that he's great at playing a complex male character. How does the Heathcliff in this film compare with the Heathcliff in the book? Very different, especially as you get to the latter half of the novel. You know, this only comprises the first 34 chapters of Bronte's text. And so as the second half unfolds, you get a whole secondary set of characters, a second generation, and there's a whole other love story that develops. And Heathcliff becomes very cruel and venal as he comes back a wealthy man. So he is a real hard character to love as the book unfolds because he starts deliberately trying to treat another child as poorly as he was treated. He imprisons characters. He forces a marriage between characters at one point. So you got to appreciate the love story element of this movie because the Heathcliff in the book is really hard to root for at times. <laughs> yeah, not a Hollywood hero. Well, Kristen Lopez, thank you so much for joining me on TCM tonight. I'm excited. Well, let's take a look at the film from 1939 with an adapted screenplay by Ben Hecht and Charles MacArthur. This is Wuthering Heights. Well, that was the film adaptation of Wuthering Heights from 1939. And I'm joined once again by Kristen Lopez, the author of the new TCM book. But have you read the book, 52 Literary Gems That Inspired Our Favourite Films? Hello again. Hi. So let's talk about that ending, because you mentioned before the film that this movie only comprises of about the first 34 chapters of the book. 
So what do you make of this uh, very romantic Hollywood ending? It's a very romantic version of the story, and it does blend some of Bronte's gothic elements, the ghostly concept of Heathcliff and Catherine being together in death, walking along the moors for all eternity, when really the gothic element is that Heathcliff feels that he is tormented and haunted by Catherine. So the concept of them being together in spirit takes on a different tone in the book because it's more like they're doomed to be together. You know, one literally cannot exist without the other. Both the film and the novel have happy endings, but they are very different in the spirit. So it really does depend on what type of feeling that you want with which version you're working with. Speaking of feeling, that's what I remember most uh, about reading this book in high school was the gothic romance, the doomed romance, the, the Yorkshire Moors. This film, of course, was shot in Southern California. But what do you think about the way that William Wyler and cinematographer Greg Toland captured the mood and the spirit of the book? Yeah, this was the only Oscar the film won was for Greg Toland cinematography, and he does such a breathtaking job. I mean, that opening sequence with Miles Manders character coming to Wuthering Heights, it's suitably dark and creepy. You don't really know what's going to happen. And yet it's all beautifully contrasted with the sequences of young Heathcliff and young Catherine out on Peniston Crag, which the Heather was real, even though they did not actually film it on the moors. There's such a sparkling beauty to it and a freedom and a wildness. It's just sparkles like a diamond. So I can definitely see why he won the Oscar for this. Although I think it should have gotten more Oscars, but you mm. cannot be anything but blown away by watching this movie, whether it's on a big screen or a small screen. And a tough year of 1939. So many great movies to choose oh, yeah. from that year. But when it comes to reading a book that has a film adaptation, I know for me, I really enjoy reading a book as almost like you get extra backstory. Maybe you get the future of the characters, like with Wuthering Heights. What does it do for you when you read a book that you, you've already seen the film first? You know, for me, I really do feel like I'm getting some sort of extra Easter egg or back in the past with DVD feature element to it. You really do get the bigger breadth of a story when you go back and you read the book and you realize maybe characters exist that didn't exist on screen or characters die in a different fashion. In this case, I understand why they only focused on the first 34 chapters, but to read Bronte's full text, it just gives you a really great example of how generational trauma can turn into love eventually. These characters grow. We see them mature and we see them hopefully try to undo the past in a way that the first set of characters couldn't accomplish. So I think it does add more context and a deeper meaning when you go back and read the source material of something that is in our consciousness already. And being someone who is both a reader and also a longtime viewer of TCM, how does it feel for you to see your name on a TCM book? It is incredibly surreal. It has not hit me yet. I feel like one day I will just be blown away by the whole thing, but I haven't gotten there yet. So it's very bizarre and exciting to me to get to be writing a book about a topic I love for a network I love that, that celebrates so many of the films I love. I'm just so honored to get to be a part of. Well, I hope you can soak it in, take it in, be proud of all the work that you did. And thank you, Kristen Lopez, for joining us on TCM tonight. Thank you for having me. And Kristen Lopez will be back with me after the break to talk about another film adaptation, this one from 1945, starring Joan Crawford. 